Hey, I'm Matt. Today I'll show you how I built this custom mallet with the display stand in honor of our Vietnam veterans. And in doing so, this actually opened up a door to raise $1,500 for an awesome organization called Canines for Warriors. They provide highly trained service dogs to our veterans in need. I'll tell you all about them later. A Vietnam veteran reached out to me and asked me if I would be willing to make this if he provided the coins, and I agreed to do so, and man, am I thankful I did. I'll tell you more about him later as well. First thing we need to do is cut everything to size. I cut my walnut and purple heart to size, and then I ran it through the planter so I get everything the exact same thickness. That's important. And then over to the table saw and ripped everything to width. Then back to the miter saw to cut everything to length. I did cut a piece of wing gauge so that I could get some veneers out of it for the inlay. I used these Carter fast setup blocks to set the blade 3 8 of an inch away from the fence so that I could cut this wing gate. Once I had that cut, I used one of our mallet templates to trace out the outline of the handle. We sell these on the store. It makes it really easy to duplicate mallets. I couldn't see the original pencil mark, so I put in my yellow lead on my Pico pencil, and that way I could see it better. And then from there, I just cut it out on the bandsaw. But you can certainly use a jigsaw for this as I've done in the past in previous videos. And then to get the final shape, I took it over the oscillating spindle sander and used those. It especially works well for the finger holes. And then I cut about an eighth inch groove or gap in the top of the mallet. That's where the wedge will go to lock it in place later. Now I just wanted to dry fit everything. I used the wingay, the, the maple, the handle, just to kind of get a fit and feel of where, how everything was gonna lay out on this mallet. Once I liked that look, I laid down this project mat. It's great for keeping glue off your surface. And then I started gluing everything up. This is mainly just a layering process and it's pretty easy to do. Just wanna make sure you use that handle and get everything pretty centered. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it needs to be close. Once you have the layout you like, I put my mallet handle in the center. I actually marked it so I know exactly where it needed to go. And then on those middle sections of maple, I put those in and press them towards the mallet handle so that it would create a little bit of pressure. And then I use 16 gauge brad nails to secure those in place while the glue dries. And from there, you just layer on the other piece of wingay and maple and then clamp everything tight. Probably gonna have a little bit of glue squeeze out in there. You can see it on the other side back there. And that's okay, because we can get that out of there, but you need to get it out of there before it dries or it'll just cause you more trouble. Great way to do that is just take a straw. This is a regular drinking straw. And you can stick it in that corner and it'll mold to that corner. And then you'll be able to push that out. So basically it's gonna create like a little V on the straw. And then you can basically just get all that glue out of there, clear up that corner. We're gonna leave those in the clamps. I'm gonna do it overnight, but six to eight hours should be fine. So I'm gonna route this with a 3 8 inch round of a bit. And the main thing to watch for here is when I'm bringing it up toward the shoulder or the top of the mallet handle is I'm gonna stop it right here where I've drawn a line which connects these two points. What that's going to do is it's going to allow it to kind of be kind of square and then taper into that um, round over. That way you don't round over all the way up into the mallet head because when you shove it in there, if it's rounded over, you're going to have gaps. You don't want that. It gives the handle a nice rounded finished feel. I've got this squishy pad that goes onto my sander. What that does is it's gonna allow me to get on those curves really well and not damage any of the roundover. In other words, it's not too aggressive. Once you start cutting and milling Purple Heart, you'll notice that your purple color goes away. But you can get that back really easily thanks to James King. I found this on his website. You just wipe your Purple Heart down with some acetone and set it in the sun. Let that Purple Heart sit there, rotate it about every 30 minutes, continue to re-wet it with acetone and your purple color will come back. I'll put a link in the description to James King's article on this. Once the glue was dry, I took it out of the clamps and took it over to the jointer and took a very, very tiny amount off each pass until I had a nice flat top. It's gonna to give me a square reference. And from there, I measured out from the hole where the mallet handle goes to the ends equally on each side and then cut each side square. I noticed I was getting a little bit of tear out on my mallet, so I used this fast cap zero clearance tape to give me a zero clearance. It prevents tear out, it makes a cleaner cut. 
Then from there, I take it and cut it, turn it 90 degrees so I can get the height of my mallet handle. Make sure you clamp this in place. Don't put your hands up there because if this thing moves or shifts, it could really hurt you. So I use the clamp here as you see. That way everything's nice and secure while I made my cut. From there, I'm gonna lay out and mark center on each side so that I can drill a hole for the coins to go in. I'm drilling a two inch hole with a Forstner bit, just deep enough that the coin's gonna be inset. Then I take it back to the miter saw, set the miter saw at five degrees, and then cut those angles. The reason I cut the angles now versus before is so that I could get that exact center on for those coins. Once that was ready, I took some CA glue to glue those coins into place, and I really, really messed up. I ended up having to drill this out because I got it crooked, and it was really bad crooked, and I couldn't live with that, and I had an extra coin. Michael, I'm sorry that I ruined your coin and I feel awful about it, but I wanted to be able to make sure that this was going to be square and level because it looked really bad. This took about 30 minutes to finally get out of there. It took me a lot of trial and error because I didn't want to damage the mouth head to be able to get this coin out and glue works and it works well. All right, now here's the lesson. Don't be in a hurry. That's what I happened last time. Put that accelerator on there. I should just let this stuff dry without the accelerator and that's what I'm doing this time. I'm just gonna put this glue on there. I'll have plenty of time to get everything uh, situated before the glue dries. Just use a straight edge and line it with the top of the mallet head. Then I'll line up the words here with the bottom of the straight edge. Then over to the router table, I'm using a chamfer bit. Be sure and use a push block in this instant because you have such a small piece you're using. But I chamfered all sides of the mallet head. This made it look really nice. It gives it a nice finished look. Now it's time to start working on the display stand. This portion of the video was originally supposed to be sponsored by Carbide 3D. However, I reached out to him and I said, hey, would you be willing to take the normal fee that you would have paid me and then put that toward a veteran organization? And they went above and beyond that because they donated $1,500 to Canines for Warriors. Canines for Warriors provides highly trained service dogs for our veterans who are suffering from PTSD, traumatic brain injury, or military sexual trauma. And they do this at absolutely no cost to our veterans. It's just an amazing thing. I love dogs and I love our veterans, so why not put the two together? Just an amazing idea. If you'd like to learn more about them, I'll put a link in the description below to Canines for Warriors. They have no association with me. I just saw this charity and thought it was fantastic. Our veterans have done so much for us. I think it's just a great way to give back and they need to keep moving forward because they've been through a lot and sometimes this kind of stuff can really help them out. So here's the challenge. We have $1,500 so far raised for Canines for Warriors. I would love to hit $5,000 raised for this awesome organization. If everybody gave five bucks, that's like a Starbucks coffee or something. If everybody gave five bucks, we would blow through that goal within a few weeks. I would love to see that happen. If you would accept that challenge, there's a link in the description below. It tells you all about how to donate. For the display base, I'm actually using a walnut charcuterie kit from Olog and Sawmill. I just take it and sand off the rough edges and then I cut it to length to fit in the mold. This is a all honey artesians mold. It's a UHMW plastic mold. It just works really well for this type of stuff. I put everything in the mold and then I mixed up the epoxy. I'm gonna be using deep pour epoxy. This stuff takes about three or four days to dry, but you don't have to worry about any of the bubbles and things like that on the, on the faster setting epoxy. From there, I just mixed up some epoxy and then put black pigment in and then poured that into the mold. But it's relatively simple and I have a whole video explaining how to do this if you're interested in knowing how to make one of these type charcuterie trays or display base like this. I take it out of the mold and I'll send it through the planer and cut everything to size and get it where I need it. Now I need some help. All right, I brought in an expert to help me on CNC to be able to finish up this mallet uh, display stand. This is Andy Bird from Andy Bird Builds YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description below, but he knows how to work the CNC. He's going to give me some help. Yeah, for sure. We're going to lay this all out. It's going to be really cool. It'll be so. a mallet display stand with some uh, inset pieces. Uh, and I think we can design this up in, and we're going to use Carbide Create to do this and uh, add some text. I think it's going to be a really neat project. Let's get after it. 
If you want to see this in more detail on how exactly we come up with this shape, with the engravings, all everything CNC based, it's going to be on Andy Bird's channel. I'll put a link to that video in the description. He did an amazing job designing this. We made a test run on a piece of plywood before we attempted it on the walnut and resin base. Better safe than sorry. I squared up one end on the miter saw and then I took it to the table saw sled and squared up both sides. Although in hindsight, this wasn't even necessary since the CNC was going to cut the dog tag shape from the middle of this. Once the design was ready, I got it ready for the CNC. I'm using double sided tape even though you probably could just get away with just clamping it down. I wanted to be extra safe with this. Power everything up and let it do its thing. So one of the great things about having a CNC in the shop is you can design custom work like this and there's really no other way to do this this easily. It cut the lettering first, then the pocket for the flag, then the pocket for the coin, and then it cut the shape of the dog tag. For some reason, the G and the O on one line actually didn't cut correctly, so I just took a chisel and cleaned that up a little bit. I'm not sure. I have a little bit of a slack in my Z axis, and I need to fix that. I know that. It just needs some tightening up that's come loose over time. Again, I use CA glue to secure the flag as well as the coin in the display. Now to fill everything, we're gonna use Olog and Epoxy Art Resin, which dries very quickly, about eight hours. So we don't have to wait no three, four days. But the only problem is it does have bubbles, so you need to use a heat gun or some type of torch to dissipate those bubbles as you after you pour. I did overfill everything on purpose because I wanted to be able to level this back out later. First I did the clear on the coin, I brushed a little bit on the flag, and then I did the black in the letter. And I poured clear over the mallet head coins at the same time on one side, we let that dry overnight, and then I did the other side the next day. I'm more than a little nervous after pouring that epoxy because, I mean, we're, we're at a stage now that if something happens, then I'm up a creek. I'm going to let this dry for about an hour on the flag, and then I'll pour clear over that. And if you like this type of content, hit that subscribe button, click the bell icon next to it so you get notified of all the new content we've got coming. Now, after this dried one day, I took it to the CNC, and I used a flattening bit or a surfacing bit to get everything back really flat. This made a huge mess. I didn't use my uh, dust collection because all those shavings coming off of there will really clog up your dust collection system. So I just let it do its thing and I cleaned it up later. Also did the same thing for the mallet head, just shaving off tiny bits until I got it close to flat and then I used a sander to flatten everything else back out. Now I just took an eighth inch roundover bit. I wanted a very minor roundover on this just to keep it nice and clean looking. And then from there, I just started sanding and I went through the grits, 120 grit all the way up to 2000 grit. Once I get into about 600 grit, I started using water to help wet sand it. And then a polishing pad and polishing compound on the clear parts, just to polish those up nice and clear. You may see this little gap I had here in the mallet head between the wing gate and the walnut. I couldn't leave that. So I just took some brown CA glue, dabbed that in there a little bit and then sanded it flat and it basically made it disappear. It's magic. Next, I cut a five degree wedge out of maple, and then I took some glue and put on that purple heart handle, and then just inserted it into the mallet head, put a little glue on the wedge, and then drive that ever so slightly in. From there, I took it over to the miter saw and just barely shaved it off until I got really close. And then I took my sander and sanded everything nice and smooth. Next, my favorite part. This is just food grade mineral oil. I took it over to my little oiling tub and then dumped oil on top of this mallet and made sure it was really covered, especially those the faces of the mallet, which will suck up more because it's ingrained. You may have to do that a couple of times. And then for the display, when you put that on there, everything just popped. I just loved how this looked. After I let that soak for a little bit, about 30 minutes or so, I took it out, got it good and dry, and then I used Outlaw's Board Butter. Because it's a mineral oil and beeswax mix, it actually helps lock in the moisture so it doesn't dry out and it makes everything feel silky smooth. What an absolute honor it has been to be able to make this for Michael. Michael was the Vietnam veteran who sent me these coins. Michael spent four years in the army, but he spent 13 months of that in Vietnam. He also, after he came home, was, went to the Air Force and spent another seven years there on their rapid response team, responding to man-made and natural disasters all over the world. 
Michael, I can't thank you enough for your sacrifice and your service. I highly recommend you check out Canines for Warriors. What a fantastic charity of giving service dogs to our veterans. Absolutely amazing. If you like this video, you'll love the fallen officer's mallet I made. You can click that box. It has an amazing story attached to it. Click in the box, get you the big old virtual fist bump. Also another one of my favorite videos right there.